welcome to Hooch Through History, the historical fiction edition. I'm Vanita Sankaran, and I'm here with my good friend, Christine Trent. Um, we are at The Modernist in San Antonio with um, drinks mixed by Olaf Harmel. So today, we're going to be drinking um, a cocktail that's based on a book that I really enjoyed and was introduced to when I was in grad school. I was not normally a mystery person, but when I was introduced to the Maisie Dobbs series by Jacqueline Winspear, I fell in love. So most of Maisie Dobbs' books um, take place after the Great War, and they incorporate a mystery, of course, but the deeper story behind them is always about how regular people dealt with the aftermath of, of war, the, the depression, the grief, the loneliness. and. These are books that are really actually uplifting. And the one that I read first was when Maisie Dobbs was asked to investigate the case of a missing aviator. And so we're pairing that story today with the aviation cocktail. And I would like to read you a little bit um, from that book. So in this particular scene, Maisie is reunited with a friend of hers, Priscilla Everdeen, who served in France and who also lost um, three of her brothers to the war. Priscilla led Maisie along a stone pathway flanked by olive trees and lavender bushes, the walls of the villa on her right ablaze with bougainvillea and passionflower. Steps led up to the broad whitewashed terrace and a more rustic stairway led down to the landscaped gardens and a small, not very successful vineyard. Come along, my dear friend, sit with me. Maisie smiled and patted the place alongside her on the wooden slatted bench, which was festooned with blue and gold cushions. Then, when we have spoken, I really must have you show me to my room and I will take a good long bath while you speak with Douglas. Priscilla swallowed, her throat dry. Can I just get a drink? Maisie sighed, all right, but be quick. Priscilla rushed inside the villa and Maisie closed her eyes. From her place on the veranda overlooking the town of Biarritz, the clink clink of ice on glass was clearly audible through the open doors. Here you are, and it's a strong one. Priscilla handed a glass to Maisie and took a seat next to her. Maisie held the glass in her left hand and slipped the fingers of her right through Priscilla's. Priscilla took a large sip from her glass as Maisie set down her untouched cocktail on a table alongside the bench and turned to face her friend. Well, I don't think our cocktails are gonna be untouched today. Probably not. But I, it's interesting to me that this is called the aviation cocktail, Vanitha, because to me the color of this sort of reminds me of a plane's wings, doesn't uh, it? That's, that's yeah, very sort of that shade it, of very it. descriptive there. Mm -hmm. um, it turns out we've learned that the color comes from one of the ingredients, the creme de violette. Okay. And so depending on which creme you use, the color will vary a bit and can get to blues and purples. All right, the next drink is called the aviation. Really pretty drink. Begin with a cocktail shaker. Three quarter ounces. Lemon juice. I do about a quarter of an ounce of maraschino liqueur. About another quarter ounce of creme de violet. And you can use an ounce and a half to two ounces of gin. I'm going to use this really nice citrusy lighter gin. It's called uh, Martin Miller's. I'm going to use maybe an ounce and three quarters. There we go. And you shake it. Garnish with a lemon twist. One aviation. Let's try it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Cheers. A little 
dry for me. I love it. It's <laughs> citrusy. It's light. It is. It is definitely citrusy. It has a citrusy aftertaste to it. Yeah. Definitely. I like it. So. It doesn't seem like I hear about this cocktail. Or do we not drink this drink now? Today? Well, so about in the 1930s, the um, Savoy cocktail book had this drink listed, but it omitted the creme de violette, and that actually went out of production. But um, in the 2005-2006 era, the cocktail was uh, rediscovered, and creme de violette came back into production, and so it's actually now a pretty popular drink. Oh, interesting. So when it comes to the Maisie Dobbs series, what other great pairings do you think there are for that, that well, series? So any drink that would have been had during the Great War. So if you want to go French, I'd say a French 75. Um, you could do anything with a rum ration for Britain, schnapps for Germany, um, maybe a sidecar to celebrate the end of the war. Or if you have nothing else, just pour yourself a glass of plonk and enjoy. Wow. All right, well, thanks for attending today. And if you've ever had any of these drinks or if you mix up your own uh, aviation cocktail, post a picture of it on our social wall. Tell us what you think about it. Tell us which of these uh, post-war drinks are your favorite and let us know. We'll see you next time.